Hi, my name is Gokul Narayan and I'm the lead faculty at the Asian School of Cyber Laws. In this video, we're going to be talking about the concept of the banking ombudsman. This is a scheme which had been introduced by the government under the RBI in 1995. But as of lately, in 2019 itself, there have been certain amendments that have been made to the scheme, which have made this concept even more relevant today. And therefore, this video. What are we going to cover in this video? What is a banking ombudsman? Who is the banking ombudsman? When can one approach the banking ombudsman? How do I file a complaint before the banking ombudsman? Which banks are covered under this scheme? Where can I find details regarding the banking ombudsman? Is there a limit on the amount of compensation that can be claimed? And last but not the least, can one appeal from the decision of the banking ombudsman? Let's first try and understand what is the meaning of the word ombudsman. The word ombudsman is from the Swedish language, it's not an English term, but it basically means an independent authority trying to resolve disputes. By this I mean it's not a court, it's not an authority which is related to either of the parties in any case, but is an independent body or an authority or a person who's trying to resolve a dispute between two people. So the next question is, what is the Banking Ombudsman? Now, the Banking Ombudsman is an authority that has been created under the Banking Regulation Act of 1949, Section 35A. This authority was created in the year 1995 with the purpose and intention of resolving disputes between customers and banks. So at any point of time, if a customer finds a deficiency in the service provided by the bank, they have the option now of going to an independent party created by the RBI with the sole purpose of resolving disputes between the bank and such customers. So the banking ombudsman is an authority that has been created solely with the purpose of resolving disputes between customers and banks. So when can one approach the banking ombudsman? I can enumerate basically three situations in which the banking ombudsman can be approached. One, if you've got a problem with the physical services provided by a bank at a branch, for example. Secondly, with respect to credit card or debit card frauds that happen online. And thirdly, the latest amendment that has taken place now allows you to file complaints with respect to UPI or e-wallet based transactions also. Now, how do I file a complaint before the Banking Ombudsman? Before we answer this question, you first of all need to understand how this authority has been created through the Territory of India. As of today, there are 21 Banking Ombudsmen which have been created in the Territory of India, basically at the state level. The latest one which has been created is in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. For a list of Banking Ombudsmen, their addresses, email IDs and telephone numbers, please refer to the link provided in the uh, caption below. Once you've ascertained the banking ombudsman and their location, you secondly have to find out where the complaint is originating from. And this changes according to the nature of the complaint. What do I mean by that? Firstly, if you've got a complaint against a branch, then you'll have to find out the physical location of that branch and accordingly file a complaint. Basically, in Maharashtra, there are two banking ombudsmen. One, which has been created for Mumbai and its suburbs. And secondly, for the rest of Maharashtra and the Goa region. So if you are a person located in Pune and you want to file a complaint against a branch in Pune, you will have to find out the banking ombudsman who is in charge of the Pune area and accordingly file a complaint. Secondly, if you've got a complaint to file against uh, a credit card fraud that has happened, then the billing address of the individual against whom this fraud has happened. So for example, if this fraud has happened with me, then my billing address as provided in my application for my credit card or debit card will be the relevant location on the basis of which the banking ombudsman will be chosen. Thirdly, if the complaint is against an online banking service provider like an e-wallet or a UPI system, then the registered billing address of the complainant is relevant to decide the authority before whom this complaint will be filed. Now that we figured out who can file the complaint, let's figure out how to file this complaint before the ombudsman. 
an aggrieved customer can go on to the RBI website, the link for which is provided in the description below, and download an application form. The application form only needs to have the details of the complainant and the nature of the complaint that he's filing, along with relevant documents. Now, this compilation can either be sent physically to the office of the ombudsman, or you can file it or submit it through an email. Now let's address the issue of which banks or financial institutions are covered under this scheme. Now, all private banks or public sector undertakings, financial institutions like UPI service providers and e-wallet service providers like PayPal, every banking institution registered with the RBI comes under the purview of this scheme. So where can you find information regarding the banking ombudsman? Although I've already provided a link in the description about the addresses of the banking ombudsman, if you still have questions and queries about how the banking ombudsman functions, what its limitations are, I will also provide a link to the FAQs on the RBI website. That should address all your questions sufficiently enough. Now let's address a few finer details. Is there a limitation or a limit on the amount of compensation that can be awarded by the banking ombudsman? Basically, there are two limits provided. One is where the banking ombudsman can give a maximum compensation of up to 1 lakh rupees. This is with respect to mental agony or trauma that has been caused to a customer because of the deficiency in services provided by the financial institution. The second one actually talks about the maximum compensation that can be given and that has been limited to a maximum of 20 lakh rupees. Last but not the least, let's understand the appellate provisions provided under this scheme. In case you're dissatisfied with a decision passed by the banking ombudsman, you have the opportunity to appeal to the deputy governor of the RBI. This appellate provision has to be exercised within 30 days of you receiving the order from the banking ombudsman. Even after this, in case you're dissatisfied, the doors for the consumer court and the regular civil courts in India still open to you. This is a part of the CyberFit campaign and therefore we will be releasing a lot more videos like this. I hope you liked this video and you found it informative. In case you have any questions about the Banking Ombudsman, feel free to leave us a comment and we can discuss the same. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.